Hi, my name is Ron Pepper. I'm a panoramic photographer here in San Francisco, and I'm also happy to work with HDR Soft. HDR Soft is the company that makes photomatic software for HDR imaging. In this video, we're going to go through the process of creating a high dynamic range panorama. The images that you see here were shot by Artium in New York recently using a remote control bracketing controller on a Gigapan Epic Pro motorized camera mount. What we're going to do next will be one of the possible workflows for creating a very large panorama like this. We will use Exposure Fusion in Photomatix Pro to combine each of the bracketed sets and then we'll stitch those results into this panorama. Alright, let's get started. Now that we have our source images, we're going to fuse each one of the five bracketed shots into one and then we're going to stitch those results into our panorama. I have the source images here as JPEGs and the reason really is only for demonstration purposes. They'll load much quicker and display quicker. Normally I would recommend to use TIFFs. Since we're doing an HDR then stitch type workflow, we're first going to combine each of these sets of five brackets and then we're going to stitch that result. So a great place to start, unless you know the settings you like to use, is to combine one of the sets and decide on the settings. So let's do that first. I thought we would take one of these from our center row of the panorama. I'm just going to drag them over here to Photomatix Pro. First thing it asks me is what do I want to do with them? Well, I want to merge them for HDR rather than opening the files. This is just um, letting me know which images are going to be combined. And it brings us to the pre-processing options. Since these were all shot on a really solid tripod system, we don't need to use the aligned source images. There was some deghosting in there, but we're doing this just as a, as a test to decide on our settings, so I don't think we need that. Reduced noise is not really needed in this case. I noticed they were shot with ISO 100, so there should be not much noise to speak of. And one of the benefits to using Exposure Fusion, which we're going to use, is that it has a side effect of reducing some noise. Chromatic Aberration we took care of during the raw conversion. So we'll hit Pre-Process. Now it's just going to combine all of the images so that we can work with the preview image and decide what uh, settings we want to use. Okay, here's our preview image. Looks a little bit flat to start, but it just opens up with um, default settings the way I have it set. The first thing we want to do is switch here up on the top above the sliders to Exposure Fusion using that radio button. Under the Method pop-up menu, we want to I choose the uh, Fusion Natural method. And I think a good place to start is to go ahead and uh, click on default and see what we have to start with. And we're not going to do too many changes since we're really choosing a, a basic set of, of adjustments so that we're going to apply them to all the images. So we'll just do a couple of small changes to brighten things up a little bit. Our histogram looks really good. There are some definite shadow areas, but that's okay. I think that's the shadows in the rocks and the blacks along the rail. I think that's just fine. So I think we'll apply these settings to all of our bracketed sets. But we're going to do that in batch processing. So a really great tool to use here is to save these settings. And we do that using the preset pop-up menu here. I can go down to save setting, save preset edit that. I'll go down here to save preset and it gives me a chance just to name it and I'm going to put it into the presets folder so that it's accessible in the same menu. Let's call it New York so we know which one we're using. 
and I don't even need to process the image. From here I can close this out and I can go up to our menu choose automate batch bracketed photos. That brings up our batch processing dialog. So here we can make all our decisions. We need to use this option for a moment, the one called Merge into 32-bit HDR. Even though we're not going to use 32-bit HDR in tone mapping, we're actually going to come down here and use Fuse Exposures with Fusion Natural. However, in the settings box here, there's some impo important items. Some of those that we saw in the pre-processing dialog when we were loading our single set. So there are some moving people in these images, so I'm going to go ahead and choose to remove ghosts. We decided not to use noise reduction. A lot of times it's a really great idea to use that. As I mentioned before, the reduce chromatic aberrations was done during raw processing, and this doesn't apply. So we can click OK, and even though I uncheck this option, those settings that we chose are still going to be respected when the images are combined. So next I can go down here and choose Fuse Exposures with Fusion Natural. Click on our settings, and here's where I have that chance to load our preset that we made. So I can use this pop-up menu, go down to New York. We already saved it. I don't think we need to save the preset again. Click OK. And moving down here, we can choose how many images we're combining at a time. And we know that was five. Alignment's not needed, so I just need to point the batch processing to my folder of images to be processed. And I have them under Gigapan tutorial JPEG. There's all my images there. Select that folder. We're not using any subfolders. The destination we'll use will be created under the source folder. We are using a JPEG workflow in this case, but here's where you can choose TIFF if you prefer. Okay, let's click Run. And after a few minutes, we'll have our combined images. Now that we've fused our images in Photomatix Pro, we have only the combined images showing. And by displaying them this way, you can even see how there's three rows, a middle row, a tilted up row, and a tilted downward row to make up the full 360 degree panorama. So now we're going to combine these images using an application called PT GUI Pro. So basically just move this aside and drag these images into the window. So PT GUI Pro is an application with a whole lot of options. We're going to try to keep it as kind of simple and quick as possible and for this demonstration here. So I just want you to know that there are many other ways to do these things. The normal workflow would be to align images, but I happen to have tried aligning these images before I recorded this, and I found that with the sky, I had to manually move the images around. That's just because there's a lot of blue sky and uh, moving clouds and the application couldn't grab onto something to find matching points. So there's a really good tool in here for that um, type of situation. And it's up here under the project menu called Align to Grid. And we'll do a really simple version here. We're just going to tell the application that there are three rows like we saw over here and five columns. So that goes up here in the, the grid section, three rows times five columns. And that's enough to, to get started here. I guessed at the amount of overlap around 35%. Click 
click apply and it tells us down here quietly to view the results in the panorama editor so I'll click on that link and this shows us how it's roughly aligned the images you see that it's not perfect yet and that's okay because now it, it knows basically where those images belong and it can then find the control points much more easily so let's do that next let's choose to go over here under the control points menu and click generate control points with the control points generated the next tool to use is the optimizer and it's reporting the results as being not so good so let's take a look at what that might be related to our panorama seems to be aligned pretty well as far as the image is going together but the horizon is off so I'm going to use the uh, horizon tool here just a one click and that's got us much closer we'll go back to adjusting the horizon in a little bit once we make sure we have our uh, source images aligned a little bit better so the first thing to do is we can check the uh, control points themselves and maybe generate some new ones and like between these two there are no control points between these two images you can see the control points showing there so I'm going to go ahead and move up a couple more so now I'm looking at two images from the middle row so we can place control points if we want to we can just click on a click on a place and then find the matching spot on the other image so that's one way to place them I'm going to delete that one because I did it very rough uh, one way that I, I really a tool that I really like to use is by holding the space bar down and dragging an area then I can right click and click on generate control points here that's telling PT GUI to focus on that zone only and it's almost always real successful so I'm going to go forward now I'm looking at two from the the uh, tilted down row the sky we're gonna check on a little bit later we'll do the same thing I'll just uh, pick a zone and and tell the application to align that area quite easy once you get the basic keystrokes down just pick this little area right here I try to go through it a little bit quickly so in this case it didn't seem to get very many control points for the the middle row for some reason okay I think I've reached the end there so now we'll see what the optimizer says still not so good I'm pressing uh, command E on the Mac to get to the panorama editor so you can see better so in general it's lined up pretty well I wonder if the uh, not so good results from the optimizer is because that the the sky images have not been have not been fixed up very well I think that's probably what it is so what I would say is we're going to mess we're gonna fix the uh, horizon just a little bit here by dragging up in here I'm holding down the uh, control key at this moment when I'm dragging this part of the image so there's a little little bit of a quick and dirty way to do the horizon that looks pretty close okay so the next thing I want to check is some of those moving items in our panorama here we have a few people and some boats and I'm not going to do them all but really quickly we'll just uh, talk about the masking a little bit I can uh, click on this green mask and just kind of paint over the parts that I what I want to use that's gonna keep it's gonna keep that area that I painted green and it's going to ignore the other instances of those people 
so that I don't have ghostly people there. I don't think he's in two images, but we'll just paint him in anyway. Can do the same for these people over here. I'm not sure if they're in two images or not. I don't think so. This one, maybe. So anyway, we can continue through there. There's also uh, something called smart blending, which I would recommend looking into if you're getting into the into panoramas. But this shows how to control it kind of manually. Just to fill that in with the fill tool. Okay. So in order to see how we're doing, I'm going to run a quick preview. That just gives us a real low resolution, quick time idea of how we're looking. So if I rotate around, the alignment looks good. And one good way I like to check is if you check things that are close by the camera, and if those are aligned, there's a good chance that things that are farther away are well aligned as well. So we look all right here. The sky looks a little muddy. And I think what's happened is that it's tried to combine the clouds and didn't really come out very well. So that could either be part of this low resolution preview or it could be because of the way it's combining. So let's try something to see if we can fix that up a little bit. It looked like the muddiness was right above that, that tall building. And here's the top of that tall building here. So let's use that same kind of masking thing we did before and just grab a big area of this image and just say keep it. So if my idea is right and it tried to put those clouds together and just got muddied up there, then that might take care of it already. Let's go look at the cloud again. Yeah, it looks a lot cleaner, doesn't it? Okay, I think that did it. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and close the quick time. I think we look pretty good. I think we're ready to render our panorama now. So it's a big panorama. If we set the maximum size, there's some presets here. If we use the maximum size, we've got a 25,000 pixel wide panorama. It's pretty big. We can choose our file format. Go ahead and use JPEG in case we're sending this around, for example. A blended panorama only, yes. And um, I'm going to use the default uh, settings in here. Like This is where you would choose that smart blending. Really quickly, smart blending will be, will eliminate many of the ghostly things. So when they're overlapping people, for example, it'll choose one or the other to use. So you, you can get away without doing the masks. That's uh, always a good option to know about. But again, we're keeping this simple. and I'm just going to use the defaults here. And I'm going to go ahead and click Create. Actually, I'm going to... Now I'm going to save my project. We'll call that Pan panorama. Create panorama. And in a couple of minutes we'll have our finished product ready for perhaps some um, little bit of post-processing.